G'day guys, Leader Pros here for fstoplounge.com. You know, I've just come back from work and I thought it was a good opportunity to bring you another video. This would be the fifth one of the week, thanks for watching. About bridging cameras. These little guys. Not so little. A lot of people confuse these little guys with the bigger digital SLRs. And it's quite obvious why. This looks like a digital SLR, but it's not. And, uh, you know, a lot of people will walk into retail stores and actually go and buy one of these thinking they've got a digital SLR. You know, I've taught numerous courses in, in photography and <laughs> you, you put on the, on the invite, you know, bring a digital SLR and people come along and you just start talking and then you say, all right, now everyone just change over to their portrait lens and you start getting people going, how, how do you change the lens on this? Well, you kind of have to stop laughing at them and uh, in a nice way and say uh, it's not a digital SLR it has digital SLR functions but it's not and let me tell you why first of all it's not an interchangeable lens camera so you can't actually change the lens but the benefit of a bridging camera over the digital SLR is that this has all the lenses built in so it's got the wide angle right to the portrait right to the telephoto um, even the macro as well so typically on a bridging camera compared with a digital SLR, you're going to have a much, much larger zoom. So in this case, on this Fujifilm X-S1, you've got a 26 times optical zoom. And you notice at the front here, it's got, I'm not sure if you can see that, it's got 24 mil, which is your wide angle. So it is wider than a lot of the, the standard um, lenses that you'll get out there, which equate to a roughly 28 mil uh, or 27.5. And the way they work out the, the other end of the scale of how, how far it goes in digital terms is they, they call it an optical zoom. So it's a 26 optical zoom. So what does that mean exactly? What does 26 mean? How far does that go? Well, they need to relate that back to the 35mm terminology that you see on digital SLR lenses. They'll have like a 70 to 200. But how far does 26 go? Well, it's easy. All you do is you get the widest angle at 24 mil and times it by the optical. So 24 times 26 works out to be, can I hear anyone? It's, I'm having to look here, I can't do the math in my head. It's 624 mil. So this lens is equivalent of 624 mil in a handheld compact lens. If you're going to a digital SLR, a 600 mil lens will, you'll be looking, carrying something like this around and you probably need a Sherpa or an assistant to carry it around with you um, because it is quite large. So this has one main advantage, it's small and compact and you can travel with it. And I find a lot of people that go traveling love this camera because they never have to change lenses and it just means you're never gonna get dust in on the sensor as well. Another important point to, to, to note here is this has a little raised section at the top Okay, most digital SLRs will have that, in fact, pretty much all of them. Um, and what, on a digital SLR, what it is, is a pentaprism. So when you look through the viewfinder, you're actually looking through a series of mirrors out the lens. And that's exactly like you would see on a telescope. I mean, you're looking through the eyepiece and it's looking down the barrel or the lens or whatever we want to call it. That's the exact same for a digital SLR. On a bridging camera, however, you will notice it's got this rear LCD screen, which is a flippy one. All it does is transfer the image from the LCD into the digital viewfinder. Now, what's really interesting about that, digital viewfinders used to be really crap. Let's just put it that way. But technology is getting much, much better. And the actual delay in taking a photo and, and seeing it and, um, is, is hardly anything. So you don't actually notice it is a digital viewfinder. And I'll give you the premium example is the, uh, the Sony A99, which is the high-end model. Shout out to Suzanne, who loves hers. Um, the A99 will have an electronic viewfinder, so you do get um, no optical viewfinders, making it a mirrorless camera almost because it's got a translucent mirror in that camera. That's another story though. Okay. Lastly, the thing I wanted to note, well, two, two other things really, is first, firstly the battery. Okay, it's a much smaller battery to it compared with the digital SLR. The milliamp rating is lower, which means that you're going to get a few less, well, a couple of hundred less photos than what you're going to get on a digital SLR. Actually, let me rephrase that. You're going to get quite a lot less than what you're going to get on a digital SLR. So if you're getting a bridging camera for traveling, make sure you get an extra battery 
um, it's just going to be more beneficial. Um, lastly, with this Fujifilm XS1, which is made in Japan, uh, you'll find a lot of the bridging cameras, like this one, you can actually shoot a faster frame rate. And the reason for that is it's got a much smaller sensor on it. And when I talk about sensor size, it relates to the actual thing capturing your image. Um, on digital SLRs, they range from full frame right down to, uh, I want to say, micro four thirds. Or if you're looking, counting mirrorless cameras, you've got the Nikon one and what is it, J1 and V1 and V2. They're not even worth a mention, but um, you'll find with the uh, bridging cameras, the sensor size is smaller than what you'd get on a digital SLR. This one, however, which is a Fujifilm XS1, will have one of the largest sensors in the um, bridging range, um, which means that you will get a better image quality at a larger size photo. Uh, it's just the way it's been designed. So, to sum up, if you're traveling and you want something portable, rather than carrying around six lenses uh, for your macro, your portrait, your telephoto, your wide angle, all those sorts of lenses, you can just carry it in one body. You're never gonna get dust in the sensor. Uh, secondly, uh, if you're doing any fast action, uh, a bridging camera is going to be uh, fantastic for that. Um, I mean, the image quality isn't going to be as good as what you're going to get on a digital SLR, but it's still damn good, if you know what I mean. So, th the only reason I would go to a digital SLR over one of these is purely for the fact that I want to be able to change my lenses to go to a, a fisheye or an extreme wide angle or even a longer telephoto than this with a two times teleconverter, like 1200 mil. I mean, who's got the money for one of those, right? And this one, you can even, you know, quick fire, rapid fire. You could just go. So there you go, guys. That's the main difference between a bridging camera and what a digital SLR would be. I hope you learned something and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.